Good day and welcome back to Cellar Chats here at the Second Glass featuring this week's weekly wine flight. And as per usual, I'm very excited because, well, I'm talking about wine and tasting wine, so what's not to be excited about? But after three long weeks of all French wine, we're back to Italy. So Viva Italiano. We're having some fun. We're drinking some, um, a couple of really classics and something very different and very new that I have never had, which I'm very excited about. So we're going to start out with Morgante, their Bianco di Morgante, which is really cool from Sicily. And then we're going to head as, about as far north as you can go in Italy to the Colio and Friuli and do Veneca and Veneca's Friulano, um, a really lovely wine. And we're going to round it out right basically southern center Campania with the legendary Master Berardino's Irpinia Ionico. So kicking it off with some delicious white wine on this kind of overcast and what was sort of balmy. It was like 64 degrees at my house this morning and now it's, I don't know, 45. So, you know, it's, it's nothing like it is up north where it's freezing cold and awful weather or icy in Texas. But nonetheless, it is going to be a chilly day at the end of it and a chilly weekend. So, again, this is Morgante. These guys are based in Sicily. Um, and this is their Bianco di Morgante. So, it is 100% Nera de Avila. So, if you're not familiar with Nera de Avila, it is a fairly dark skinned, really dark red grape. Um, but here, these guys are pressing it directly off the skins to make a sort of Blanc de Noir, still not a bubbly wine out of it, which I'm very excited to taste. So you can see just absolutely beautiful, gorgeous, very clear, clean cut. Um, I've had some other kind of off the beaten path, um, Blanc de Noir bottlings of wine, particularly um, there's a great producer that I'm fortunate to sell that makes a Blanc version of Ionico from Basilicata, which I really, really love. So always excited to try something new. I mean, you know, the most classic, not classic, the most commonly seen one that has really gotten some attention in the last few years would be like the white Pinot Noirs of Oregon. Some of them now are kind of labeled white Pinot Noir, but they're really more of a rosé. Um, but then there are some like specifically, I'm thinking of Amity, um, I think Amity Vineyards makes one that is just fully pressed off the skins, almost zero skin contact. So it is a clear, clear, beautiful color. Mm. Right on the nose, salty, like fresh citrus. I'm just picturing, not that I've ever been there, but I imagine this is what it feels like. Just fresh citrus groves in Sicily. I'm walking near the sea and maybe I'm walking on like a gravel road. That's kind of what this smells like. Gravel road surrounded by citrus groves by the ocean. Sign me up. I'm ready to go. Mm. Wow. Super vibrant. It's got this, um, there's a really pretty like textural element, even though it's high toned, like kind of like blood orange citrus, little like Meyer lemon citrus. There is a rounded texture, which I think honestly really comes from the fact that it is a fuller bodied, darker red grape typically. So it's being pressed off this. So you have that ripeness and that texture and everything, but um, it also has, you know, all of the freshness that you want. It is so, oh man, this is so good. I'm really enjoying this. This is brand new. I think Celeste just brought this in maybe like a week ago or so, and she just put it on the list. Um, so she was pretty excited to feature it, and I was obviously excited to taste it for good reason. Wow, that is really yummy. Mm. And what a great way to like kind of transport you from these kind of gloomy and a little bit cooler weather we're getting again. I mean, it's, it's February. It's not it's supposed to be like hot outside, but we're getting a blast of of colder, gloomy weather. So sipping on this kind of just transports you back to a beautiful seaside area. Maybe you're having some fresh seafood in your mind or on your plate. Some definitely some amazing fresh seafood on the menu here. All right, so moving on to another kind of, well, it does some, some parts of it are on the sea, but Friulano all the way up in the far northeastern reaches of Italy. 
This is in the Colio region, which is a sub appellation of the Friuli. Full name would be Friuli Venezia Giulia. And this is Vene Canvitica. So if you've watched these pretty regularly or you've been into second glass before, Vene Canvitica, it would be no new name to you. They have long kept the incredible Pinot Grigio from them. Yes, I know what you're thinking, Pinot Grigio, that sounds boring. It's not, I assure you. What they label as the Jacera. Um, but this is their Friulano, which is the kind of like, it is the capital T-H-E, the grape of the Friuli region. Friulano, it is named after the area. Um, long was called Tokai Friulano, um, but I want to say maybe a decade ago, maybe a little less than that, um, they had to drop, legally they had to drop the Tokai name because there's a very famous wine region in Hungary, not far from here, that is Tokai, and those wines are labeled Tokai. Now the spelling is different, but the EU agreed that there really should only be one wine that has a specific name of Tokai on it. So in Friulano, they dropped the Tokai. I personally don't think it's a problem. A lot of producers, you know, because historically they always use it that way. Um, we're not super happy about it, but regardless, it's the same wine. So if you've ever had it, it's, you know, if you've ever had Tokai Friulano, it's the same as Fri uh, Friulano. Same grape. Um, what I really like about this grape is that, and the wines that you can make from this, is that it is a far more complex and interesting white wine from Italy. Generally speaking, most people look at white wine from Italy and they think light, fresh, crisp, easy drinking, they all taste the same which is really doing a disservice. Now, you know, for, for you know, all intents and purposes, there is a lot of wine that is like that, but there are some really incredible grapes and really incredible white wines being made in Italy, arguably far more interesting as a category than the red wines. Somebody might disagree with me, but go ahead, let's battle it out. Um, but Friolano has like a bit of like an almondy, like nutty character, a little bit of like baked pear, it very much, gives me like the vibes of like what I think people like in Chardonnay. Doesn't taste like a Chardonnay, but it has that like rounded mouth feel, more complexity, less about like high toned citrus fruit and more about like stone and like orchard fruits. The nose is a little herbaceous, which is a classic Italian, you know, Italian grape in general. Like there's always a sense of herbaceousness to them. Mm. There's very much like a, almost like a little bit like waxy kind of, um, how do I want to explain this? It's, it's almost, it, it's a flavor and a texture that's really hard to pinpoint. It's kind of a waxy beeswax, a little bit like honeyed characteristic without being sweet. It is so, so tasty. Um, and it like couldn't be more different than the Morgante. Rosette is like saline, fresh citrus, sea air, and minerals. This is textured, rounded, a little nutty, a little waxy. Um, again, that baked pear fruit, which I just can't get past. Mm. Sign me up, so good. Again, that is the Veneca and Veneca Friulano from Nicolio. All right, we're gonna round it out. Master Berardino, Arpinia Ionico. All right, I'm gonna try not to talk too long about this wine or this producer. But as briefly as I can make it, Master Berardino is the single most important producer from south of Tuscany, period. End of story. Um, there are other incredible producers that are doing amazing things, but as far as the modern history of Italian wine has happens in southern Italy, again, that's south of Tuscany, no producer has done more to bring attention to the region in the area than Master Berardino. Um, these guys have a long, long history in Campania. So we're, we're outside the city of Naples, about, about an hour away or so, up in the mountains. Um, they're very famous for their Tarazi bottling. They basically, what makes them so special is they've never changed their ways in hundreds and hundreds of years. They were one of the first wineries in all of Italy to export outside of the traditional markets, which would be Europe, you know, to places like South America, the US, South Africa, Australia. Um, and after the world wars, where basically all of Southern Italy was decimated, these guys 
stuck to their guns, said, no, we are going to champion the great native grape varieties. And they pretty much single-handedly <sighs> saved the grape varieties of Fiano, Greco, Falangina, and Ionico to some extent. So the reason that Campania has such a beautiful and amazing wine, wine industry and like local vineyards from local varieties is really because of this family. So I'm definitely biased, but I think these wines are exceptional. So this is their Erpinia, Ionico. Ionico is, to me, I kind of describe it as Sangiovese meets Nebbiolo in a way. That's cheapening it a lot, but it's an easy way to, to, to transcribe it. It's got the rustic, more red fruit brightness of Sangiovese. It's a little more darker and a little more structured like Nebbiolo, but it's really like neither of them. Um, the Erpinia bottling is really made for earlier drinking, although you could lay it down, but it is delicious today. A little more fruit, beautiful tannins. Lots of like pretty florals, more like purple and like maybe a little bit of white flowers. Mm. I think like roses, violets, kind of crunchy raspberry, blackberry fruit notes, nice tannins. They're very soft. Again, that classic herbaceous character It is just so drinkable. It is an excellent wine from an excellent producer and a great way to round it out today. So again, quick wrap up, kicking it off the weekly wine flights, Morgante, their Bianco di Morgante, which is hundred percent Nero Diabla pressed directly off the skins to make a white wine. Vinica and Vinica, their Friulano from Colio and the Friuli Venezia Giulia region. And on a serious high note, Master Berardino's Irpinia Ionico in the Campania region. Thank you for tuning in. Come out, grab some flights, share with friends, grab some food. Chef's killing it back there with his whole team. Uh, and I mean, come on, there's no better. What, what else do you need in life? Delicious food, friends, and great wine. Bye.